Hello, good morning to everyone and welcome to Baptist Bible Church. Welcome to our online Sunday school. Let us all stand as we begin our Sunday school with a hymn. Let us sing the song, O Worship the King. So tayo po ay nagtipon-tipon, binama mga mananampalataya upang sambahin ang ating hari, ang ating haring Diyos. O Worship the King, all together on the first verse, ready, sing! O Worship the King Father, we praise you, Lord, for another Sunday that you have given to us. We worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. And we thank you, Lord, for all the goodness that you have bestowed to us for your grace. Lord, we ask that you forgive our sins. And for this time, we'll ask, Lord, for wisdom and guidance from the Holy Spirit as we continue our lessons. Help us understand that you indeed our maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. All these things I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated as we continue our combined Sunday School series. We are conducting uh, our lessons for those who have just joined us. Welcome. Welcome to those also who are listening to us online. So kindly turn your Bibles to Judges chapter 8 as we continue our series on this book. Now, in the book of Judges, it is very important for us to understand and for those who have been with us for quite some time to remember that in this book, we can see the people of God, the chosen people of God whom he has chosen to rescue from Egypt, to whose forefathers he promised that he would bless them and he would give them a land of promise that they would eventually enjoy. And now the Israelites, by this time, that by, in the book of Judges, they are already enjoying this land. But because of the peace that they have enjoyed and because of their wicked hearts, they have chosen to turn away from God and they have chosen to worship other gods, the gods of the nations around them, who, uh, the gods whom the nations around them are worshiping. So in other words, itong mga Israelitang ito ay sumamba sa mga ibang Diyos na hindi naman sila niligtas. Ang Diyos na nagligtas sa kanila ay hindi nila pinapansin bagkos tinalikuran pa nila ang mga ito. At dahil sa mga kagawa ng mga Israelites ay hindi na iwasan ang parusa na nagmula sa Diyos. And they were eventually oppressed by a people whom they uh, referred to, whom the scripture refers to as the Midianites. The Midianites continually oppressed them for many years. And for many years they cried out to God, they realized their mistakes. These Israelites realized that they have turned against Jehovah whom, uh, who rescued them and whom they are supposed to worship. And so they called on God, and God has brought them these judges, these deliverers, these governors uh, whom, who rescues them out of their problems. And in chapter 7, we see the judge named Gideon whom God used to rescue them. And how many men did, God, did Gideon accompany? How many men accompanied Gideon in his battle against the Midianites? There were only 300 select men. Because God wants the Israelites to realize that victory and deliverance only comes from Him and not through their own strength. 
And that is why using Gideon and his 300 men, God allowed the Israelites to enjoy deliverance from oppression. They were able to enjoy deliverance from thousands of Midianites that oppressed them. But as we have studied last week, we see Gideon, their leader, pursuing after the Midianites. So the story did not end when the Midianites have scattered because there is still more to the story of Gideon. And we can see Gideon pursuing the Midianite kings. And he passed by this group of people called the people of Sogot and the people of Penuel, and he asked them for bread. Dahil puyat si Gideon, pagod sila at kanyang mga tauhan, at inahabol niya itong mga Midianite kings na to na sobrang bilis ang takbo. Na-confuse sila, di ba? So hinabol ni Gideon, and then they were hungry, so they asked for bread. And when they passed by this group of people, the people of Penuel and the people of Sokot, Gideon asked for bread, and these people did not provide him bread. And so, Gideon bore a grudge against those people. Sabi niyo, manda kayo sa akin, pag natapos ko itong ginagawa ako, babalikan ko kayo, paparosahan ko kayo. And his punishment against these people, people were so severe just because they did not provide him bread. Some people say it is because they have chosen to not to side with God's people. Kaya naman galit na galit si Gideon. And so Gideon uh, used the plants in the wilderness and used them to punish those people in Sokoth and he killed the princes or the leaders in Penuel. He destroyed their tower. From those verses, we can see somehow Gideon's attitude and character. And we can get to learn more about him as we read the following verses. Kindly look in Judges chapter 8 and let's begin reading from verse 18. Last week we studied verses 1 to 17. Now join me as we read verse 18. Pati po yung mga nasa uh, online, get your Bibles. Page, uh, verse 18, it says here, Then said he unto Zeba and Zalmuna, by the way, in verse 18, Gideon has already captured the Midianite kings whom he has rescued. But the problem with Gideon is that he went back to the people of Sokot and Penuel to punish them, to finish his business with them. And so, dito sa verse 18, kinakausap na niya itong mga general ng kalaban nila na possible na pinapalibutan nila at nakaluhod na sa kanilang harap, ni-interrogate nila bago patayin. Verse 18, Then said Gideon unto Zeba and Zalmuna, What manner of men were they whom ye slew at Tabor? And they answered, As thou art, so were they, each one resembled the children of the king. And he said, They were my brethren, even the sons of my mother. As the Lord liveth, if ye had saved them, I would not slay you. So, we will understand why Gideon really wanted to pursue after these Midianites. That he somehow fa failed to claim the promise of God that it is through him and the 300 men whom God will give him the victory. Somehow he depended so much on the people around him to help him and ensure the victory that God has already promised. And this is the reason. He wanted to avenge his brethren. He wanted to avenge his brothers whom the Midianite kings have slain. Meron pa palang story na hindi nabanggit sa earlier chapters. Si Gideon, galit na galit sa mga Midianite kings dahil yung mga kapatid niya ay pinatay nitong mga Midianite kings na ito. Gideon was out to avenge his brothers who were slain. And we can see that it appears that his primary reason is not to deliver the people but somehow... He is cultivating in his heart that the reason why he is killing the Midianite kings is not to enact the justice of God, but to avenge his brethren. Gideon acted as though the Midianites were at his mercy. And we can see here, balikan natin yung verse 18, ay yung verse 19, sabi niya, If ye had saved them alive, I would not slay you. Sino ba ang may hawak ng buhay ng mga Midianite kings? Hindi ba ang Diyos na nagsabi, the victory will be yours, Gideon. These Midianites have oppressed you, have oppressed the Israelites for a very long time. The victory is yours. Pero ito si Gideon, tila ba sinasabi niya na hawak ko ang mga buhay niyo? Kung hindi niyo lang pinatay yung mga kapatid ko, edi sana mabubuhay kayo. Pero ang implication niya, papatayin ko kayo kasi pinatay niyo yung mga kapatid ko. 
So it appears in these verses that Gideon is turning God's victory to a personal victory. And a lot of commentators have noticed this. A lot of Bible scholars have noticed this, that it appears that Gideon is somehow acting as though this is a personal grudge and not about the victory that God has given to the Israelites. Let's continue in verse 20. And he said unto Jether, this is Gideon again talking, and he said unto Jether, his firstborn, up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared because he was yet a youth. So in this verse, we can see Gideon, the king, and somehow he is acting like a thug or a gangster at this time. Kakaparusa lang niya yung mga tao sa Sokot at pinatay niya yung mga tao sa Penuel, pinasira niya yung tore nila. And now the Midianite kings who held thousands of uh, infantrymen and chariots are now kneeling before him. And instead of slaying them, what did Gideon do? He talked to his son. Sabi niya kay Jeter, lalagay natin sa sarili nating lingwa eh. Oh, anak, pakipatay nga itong mga haring ito. Why does he have to do that? There is no clear indication as to why Gideon has to ask his son, who in this verse ang nakalagay dito ay bata pa. At itong anak niya ay takot na takot. Maaring ha pinahawak sa kanya yung pampatay pero hindi niya magawa dahil according to this verse, he did not slay them. The youth drew not his sword for he feared because he was yet a youth. Ibalik natin yung attention kay Gideon. Why would you ask your son, your young son, to kill your enemies, especially the Midianite kings? We can see that this is an addition of insult to injury against the kings. Gusto niyang ipahiya ang mga haring ito na hindi basta mga tao ang pumatay sa kanila, kundi isang bata. Isang bata lang, at hindi lang basta isang bata, kundi yung anak niya. He wanted his son to share the glory. And we can see that this is a possible strategic move to establish his family's reputation. Itong si Gideon, farmer lang naman to eh. Okay, he was a farmer and he was scared na tuwing dadating yung mga Midianites, isa sa Diyos sa mga nagtatago. Kinatago nila yung mga ani nila para hindi kunin na Midianites. And we can see here that this Gideon is a very vengeful man. Or rather, by this time, no, yung power siguro, sobrang pagod niya sa sobrang stress niya, medyo nag-overpower yung kanyang ego. And we know how he punished those men. In Sokot, nakakahiya yun. Mga leader kayo ng lugar niya, tapos papayain kayo. Paparasaan kayo, papatayin kayo. This is what he wanted also to happen against the Midianite kings, wherein he asked his son to kill them. And we can see that this is a possible, again, this is a possible strategic move to establish his family's reputation. And we can see why in the later verses. There is no indication in Scripture that Gideon consulted the Lord for these extra actions. And you can see that in the book of Judges, as we progress, the Judges became worse. Worse and worse. Palala sila ng palala. And if you would read up to the end of the Judges, it appears na yung mga, huli, eto, mga huling Judges na to, tila ba, konti na lang yung kanilang pagkonsulta sa Diyos. Yes, the Spirit of God is upon them, but their actions show that they are relying more on themselves. And that is why we can see that there is only one perfect Judge whom God would give to the people. And we will talk about that later in the lesson. Now, let's continue in our verses. Verse 21. Judges chapter 8, verse 21, para sa mga kakarating lang po. Verse 21. Then Zeba and Zalmuna, these are the Midianite kings, said, Rise thou and fall upon us, for as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose and slew Zeba and Zalmuna and took away the ornaments that were on their camels' necks. So si Gideon, gusto niyang pahiyain itong mga Midianite kings. Instead, siya pa yung napahiya. Inasar pa siya ng mga Midianite kings bago niya patayin sila. So nag-backfire yung gusto niyang plano. Gideon slays the kings and not only that, he takes their amulets. While it was normal for victors to take the spoils of war, especially during that time, kapag patay na yung mga kalaban mo, Sinong gagamit ng mga gamit nila? Pwede nang kunin yun. But what Gideon did when he took the amulets from these slain kings, this is a prelude or a foreshadowing of Gideon's greed. Malalaman natin eventually in this chapter that Gideon is really uh, craving for wealth. 
At ito yung isa sa mga unang bagay na ginawa niya para ipakita itong attitude niya. His recent actions could be a manifestation of his growing ego. Let's continue reading. Now in this part, we would see that Gideon has already the victory. This, the Midianite kings have already been slain. Wala nang kumukontra sa kanila. And they are at peace. Now, how did Gideon live? Paano na buhay si Gideon? Look at your Bibles, verse 22. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son. Diba? Pati yung son niya, bida na rin. Wala namang hindi natin alam kung may tinulong ba to. Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. 23. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. Now, when the people of Israelites realized that the, their enemies have been defeated, they wanted a governor. They want someone who would guide them. And there is no other perfect candidate at that time, none other than Gideon. And because of what Gideon has done, because of his reputation, they wanted him to become king. And to his credit, maganda itong sinabi ni Gideon. Sabi niya, hindi ko kayo pwedeng pamunuan. Si Jehovah ang mamumuno sa inyo. But will his actions be a manifestation of these words? Ang kanyang mga susunod na kilos ay parehas ba sa kanyang sinabi? Let's continue reading. And probably when he said that, he was very sincere. Tama nga naman na hindi pwedeng maghari-harian ng isang tao kung andyan naman ang Diyos na dapat ilang sundin at andyan ang kanyang mga batas na dapat sundin. Bakit pa kailangan ng isang hari-hari? Verse 24, And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you that you would give me every man the earrings of his prey. For they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, we willingly give them. And they spread a garment and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, besides or ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian, and besides the chains that were about their camels' necks. Sabi ni Gideon, hindi ko kayo pamumunuan, pero meron akong request. Meron akong mga request, mga kapatid. Ganito gagawin nyo. Yung mga kinuha nyo, mga loot, mula sa inyong mga kalaban, bigay nyo na lang sa akin. And, and napakarami na nakulekta niya. Makikita nyo, 1,700 shekels of gold. Na imbis na ini-enjoy ng mga friend niya, gusto niya, sa kanya mapupunta. And these are the loot from their enemies. What else? Yung ornaments pa, yung mga kagamitan sa gera, yung colors, and purple raiment. By, at this time, yung purple is, uh, a purple raiment is very expensive at that time because the dye, the purple dye is very rare. Sa ngayon, madali na lang maggumawa ng purple na mga damit. But at this time, very expensive talaga ito. And so we can see the great amount of wealth that Gideon asked from his brethren. Why did he do this? Sabi niya, hindi dapat, pag, hindi dapat maghahari-harian. Pero anong ginawa niya? Nangingi siya ng napakaraming wealth. Verse 27, And Gideon made an effort thereof, and put it in his city, even in Ophrah, and all Israel went thither, a whoring after it, which thing became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. Yun pala ang plano ni Gideon. Kaya gusto niya nahakutin lahat ng mga earrings na nakuha ng mga tao niya mula sa kanilang mga kalaban is gusto niya magtayo ng isang simbolo. And what is the reason for this symbol? Maaring gusto niya i-commemorate yung kanyang tagumpay laban sa thousands of Midianite kings na napakahirap talunin. Imagine for around, if I'm not mistaken, 18 years, these people have oppressed them. And with 300 men, he finally defeated them. He wants to commemorate this victory and so he used the earrings of their enemies to make an ephod. Now what is an ephod? This could probably be referring to the garment that the high priest is wearing. Gumawa siya ng gintong version nito and he displayed it for all people to see. What did the people of Israelites do? 
Dahil marami talaga sa mga Israelites ay sabay lang sa uso. Kumbaga, kung kailan lang sila nakaka-oppress. O sige, tawagin na natin lahat ng Diyos. Ah, andyan pala si Jehovah. Ngayong wala na silang kalaban, merong distraction, may idol, dun sila sasamba. Kung sino yung gusto nilang sambahin, kung ano yung gusto nilang sasambahin, ganun yung ginagawa nila. And when Gideon made this effort, this golden effort, what did the people do? They went a whoring after it. Napakabigat yung term, no? Para sila mga uh, babaeng mga hindi asawa, no? Na, talagang nag sila dun sa idol na yun. Which thing became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. Meaning, Gideon was accountable for his action. And the The reason why these Israelites are worshiping is because of his action. Gideon might have good intent. Maaring sabihin nyo, oh si Gideon, baka ano lang yan, gusto lang niyang magtayo ng memorial to commemorate God's victory. Gideon might have a good content, but we know what happens when people create visual representations of God. May naalala po ba kayong lesson natin? Na gusto nilang, ano ba yan, hindi namin makita si Moses, hindi namin makita ang Diyos. Ano nilang gagawin natin? Agawa tayo ng nakikita natin na sasambahan natin. Familiar po ba? This was the golden calf. They said that they want to worship Jehovah, but His presence in the tabernacle or His presence with them is not enough for them. And so they want to have this visual representation of God whom they will worship. And eventually, it shows na hindi naman talaga ang Diyos ang sinasamba nila kung di itong imahe na to. And the people of Israel worship this effort. With this effort, it makes us wonder if Gideon ever took upon himself the role of a high priest. But the Bible did not say. This is uh, one of the things that we might ask ourselves. Bakit gagawa si Gideon ng effort? Hindi naman siya priest. So, let's continue reading. Verse 28. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel so that they lifted up their heads no more and the country was in quietness 40 years in the days of Gideon. And Jerubal, the son of Joash, by the way, this is Gideon also, went and dwelt in his own house. And Gideon had three score, sixty yan, three score and ten sons, sixty plus ten, seventy, of his body begotten, for he had many wives. And his concubine that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son, whose name he called Abimelech, which, by the way, means, My father is king. Pangalan niya ng anak niya. Uy, anak, uh, ang tatay ko ay hari. Yan ang pangalan mo, para astig, di ba? So, yun na sinabi niya, possibly. So, verse 32, And Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good old age and was buried in the sepulcher of Joash, his father, in Ophrah of the Abiezerites. And it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again and went a whoring after Baalim and made Baal berit their God. Balikan natin yung mga sinabi natin or yung mga nabasa natin. No? Now, we can see that Gideon was able to acquire a lot of wealth. Madami siya, yumaman siya because of his victory, because of this effort also. We know that he is rich because he was able to support these numerous wives. And through these wives, he had numerous sons. And there were a lot of polygamous men in the Bible, but let us be clear, mga kapatid, that God never blessed people for being polygamous. God never blessed people for being polygamous. God blessed people even though they are polygamous in the Old Testament, but not because they are polygamous. There were Old Testament provisions also dahil napakarami mga Israelites na nag-aasawa ng marami. And so, eventually, there became provisions as to how these women would be protected. But having many wives were never mentioned to be God's original plan for marriage. Tayo mga mananampalatayang mga Kristiyano ay hindi po naniniwala na ang isang Kristiyano ay dapat nagkakaroon ng maraming asawa. And there are numerous reasons for this. Again, this is an entirely different topic, but we have to address here because this is what Gideon did. Si Adam, ay binigay po ng Diyos sa kanya, iisang asawa lang. And we know that when the Apostle Paul gave qualifications, godly qualifications regarding the men of the church, ang sabi niya, isa lang dapat ang asawa ng mga taong to, na tinitingala dapat ng mga tao. And of course, the relationship between Jesus Christ and His bride is also isa lang. And so, this is why we believe that God never blesses people because they are polygamous. 
To have multiple wives at the time and multiple children meant that the husband had a great amount of wealth. So our conclusion here is that Gideon indeed enriched himself after the victory. Nagpayaman si Gideon. And one of his children, Abimelech, is named, My father is a king. So para doon sa mga nagdududa na, ah, hindi, ano lang yan, possible na misinterpretation lang yan. Mabait pa rin si Gideon hanggang sa huli. True, maaring may mga times na mabait siya, pero even, na, hindi tinago ng Biblia yung kanyang attitude na minsan ay tuwang-tuwa din siya sa sarili niya. Or GGS, guwapong-guwapo sa sarili. Si Gideon, GGSG. Gideon's actions are suspicions and to think that he said, I do not want to rule you, only God will rule you, but his actions said otherwise. Verse 34, And the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God, who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side. Neither showed they kindness to the house of Jerubal, namely Gideon, according to all goodness which he had showed unto Israel. So Gideon died and the people eventually turned to other gods. Ganun po yung cycle ng Book of Judges. God would provide them a deliverer, God would give them peace, and the people would eventually turn back, turn against God. And then once na nahihirapan na sila, they would cry to God, God would provide them a deliverer, and then the cycle repeats. Gideon might have delivered the Israelites and governed them well, but his strange retirement plan showed his underlying ambition to be a king. Maari may mga araw sa buhay ni Gideon na pinag-iisipan niya yung sinagot niya sa mga Israelites. Ano kaya kung ako yung ginawa nilang hari? At nag-manifest ito sa kanyang mga actions. Now, in this lesson, we can see the big idea that worshiping God means exalting Him above all else, including oneself. Yes, Gideon was used by God to illustrate and grant divine deliverance for his people, but Gideon was not perfect. Kagaya rin po natin si Gideon. At maaaring kung tayo na ilagay sa posisyon ni Gideon, maaaring mas malala pa yung ginawa natin. The actions of Gideon late in life showed how full he was with himself, and he eventually became a snare to his people who worship other gods. Instead of through his victory and through his judgment, he would point people to God, he pointed people to himself. Maaring na-encourage pa niya yung mga Israelites na talagang itaas ang tao at yung idolo imbis na ang Diyos. The Israelites who quickly went after other gods needed redemption. It is a good thing that in this story, God allowed the Israelites to be delivered from the Midianites. This is the story of deliverance or redemption na tinitignan natin sa bawat kwento ng Biblia. And through these stories of redemption, the Israelites are supposed to realize that God is powerful. Na nakakalimutan nila itong Diyos na nagligtas sa kanila. At itong Diyos ay napakapangyarihan na kahit sino man tatayo ng mga Diyos-Diyosan at mga nasyon laban sa kanya ay kaya niyang patumbahin. But the Israelites failed to realize this. God's character revealed to them should have caused them to profess their faith to Him and to His promised Redeemer. Sa simulang-simula pa lang, sinabi na ng Diyos sa mga una nagkasala na merong magiging tagapagligtas. Hindi ko kayo pababayaan. At dapat ito yung pangako na pinanghawakan ng mga Israelita. Now for this lesson, this points to the deliverance that comes from no one else but from God alone. Ito din yung applicable sa atin. Kapag tayo ay uh, pag-uusapan natin ang spiritual deliverance mula sa pagsamba sa ibang mga Diyos-Diyosan, mula sa pag-samba sa ating sarili, sino ang kailangan natin? Ang Diyos lamang. To the Israelites, God offered deliverance not just from their political enemies but also from their sin. And that is why, my brothers and sisters in Christ, just as God has given the Israelites a rescuer in Gideon, God has also given us a Savior who is none other than Jesus Christ. Ituturo po natin itong lesson na ito, hindi sa ating sarili, ay, ako si Gideon. Ituturo natin ang lesson na ito kay Jesus Christ. Kailangan nating alamin kung ano ang matututunan natin tungkol kay Jesus Christ. And as believers, our focus should be in Jesus Christ alone so that we could avoid the sins and the problems that occurred in the stories that we have read. 
How do I apply this this morning? Let us acknowledge that Christian life does not revolve around human personalities, but around Jesus Christ. Gideon acted as though he was the star of the people. He acted as though he was king even though he was not. He acted like an exalted believer. At kaya tayo mga mananampalataya, tayo mga magkakapatid sa Diyos, hindi dapat tayo nagtataas ng kung sino man sa atin. Tangi ang Diyos lang ang iaangat natin. Yes, parte sa buhay natin yung pag-encourage sa isa't isa, pero hindi dapat tayo sumasamba sa mga tao na nagtataas sa kanilang sarili. Nakakalungkot sa panahon ngayon na sa mga simbahan, ang makikita nyo yung bida talaga ay yung mga, sad to say, pero totoo to, mga, nagpa, mga pastor, mga leaders ng simbahan. Sila yung nakikita ang bida, me, me, me. Acology, ang kanilang tinuturo, instead of theology. Kung ano ang naranasan nila sa buhay, yun ang kanilang tinuturo, imbis na kung ano ang dapat ituro mula sa Biblia. Puro life experiences, puro business, yun ang tinuturo nila sa pulpito. And people, Church of God should not tolerate this kind of action because again, the ministry does not revolve around personalities. It does not revolve around our favorite believers. Inuulit ko po, we can encourage our fellow believers, but we must not exalt them. Let us serve God because it is what God told us to do and not because we have some favorite people who are encouraging us. Madaming mga ganyan na kinakailangan pa nila yung mga tinitingala nila mga Christians ang mag-encourage sa kanila before sila sumunod sa Diyos. Babalik tayo doon sa ginawa ni Barak, di ba? Ayaw niyang sumunod sa Diyos pero kung susunod si Deborah, susunod din siya. So, ganun din yung ma- maaari nating iwasan. We could avoid exalting people in the church by not treating them as our commander. Yung su- mga utos na, sinu- na binigay sa Biblia, sundan na natin to hindi na natin kailangan ng pag-uudyok nila or hindi tayo nakabase sa kung anong desisyon nila because our final authority is scripture and not men. Let us look to God for motivation for holy living instead of our favorite believers, not only in this church but online, di ba? Madami mga respectable Christians na sinasabi natin ng mga favorite natin na inaangat na natin sila. E paano kung nagkasala sila? Kasi tao lang din naman sila. E di madidiscourage tayo. Madami nangyayaring ganyan. May mga paborito silang pastor, may mga paborito lang speaker, and then eventually, itong mga taong ito nagkasala. O saan sila ngayon titingin? Kasi sinanay nila, ang sarili nila, na tumingin sa tao, imbis na tumingin sa Diyos. So let us acknowledge that Christian life does not revolve around human personalities, but around Jesus Christ. The second thing is, let us acknowledge that the Christian life starts with a personal relationship with God, through His Son. You cannot say that you are a Christian if you have not professed your faith in God's provided Savior who is none other else than Jesus Christ, God the Son, who died on the cross and paid for the sins of sinners. It is very natural for us sinners to exalt ourselves. At kaya nga, di ba, kung babalikan natin yung mga sinaunang mga tao, and they have this kind of concept of langit, gusto nilang isalbang sarili nila dahil may conscience sila nagsasabi na may kailangan silang gawin para maligtas. And so, anong gagawin nila? They would rely on works. They would rely on sacrifices. They would rely on human sacrifices. And even until now, marami pa lang relihiyon na nagtuturo na kinakailangan mong pagtrabahuhan ang iyong kaligtasan. Pero kapag ginagawa natin to, ang nangyayari is ang inaangat natin ang ating sarili. If you are relying on yourself for your salvation, if your salvation lies on your hands instead of the hands of God, inaangat mo ang sarili mo. God is not the author of your salvation but yourself na pwede mong bitawan ng iyong kaligtasan kahit anong mangyari, ay kahit anong oras. But the good thing is that we who are believers were able to realize our need for a Savior. At kaya naman sinasabi sa Biblia sa Romans 3.23, All have sinned. That is the clear warning of Scripture na lahat ng mga nagkasala laban sa Diyos, pati itong mga Israelitang ito na nagkasala laban sa Diyos, kung hindi sila sasampalataya sa ipinangako ng Diyos na tagapaglitas, pagbabayaran nila yung kasalanan nila. Kung baga, parang may ano sila, merong condemnation sa kanila, merong hatol sa kanila. At kinakailangan nila maparasahan dahil sa mga kasalanan na gawa nila. Lahat tayo na nagkasala sa Diyos. Pero anong... Anong promise ng scripture? Romans 6.23, ano nakalagay? 
For the wages of sin is death, yan yung parosa. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God is holy. Yes, that's true. And we should tremble because God is holy and we are sinners. But God also is merciful and gracious and loving that He provided a Savior, not just for us, but also for these Israelites who will worship Him and profess their faith on Him. Para sa ating mga nakikinig, sa ating mga bisita sa live stream, nagawa niyo ba na sumampalataya kay Kristo Jesus na namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo para pagbayaran yung hindi natin kayang bayaran sa isang sa harap ng isang banal na Diyos. Namatay siya sa krus at tinanggap niya yung parusa para sa makasalanan. At kung sino man ang sasampalataya sa kanya ay hindi nahuhusgahan ng ganong klaseng parusa. Dahil ang tumanggap ay walang iba kundi si Jesus Christ na. Kung hindi mo pa nagagawa yun, hindi mo pa masasabi na kristyano ka. Kung hindi ka pa sumasampalataya sa Diyos, hindi mo pa masasabi na kristyano ka. Maaring sa bibig lang, pero hindi sa puso. That is why, important para sa ating mga mananampalataya na i-review itong mga bagay na to. So that, application number three, let us acknowledge that we Christians have a role in leading others to Christ. Lead others to Christ and not to, to ourselves. Gideon might have achieved victory for Israel in the name of the Lord, di ba? The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And then sabi niya, only God will lead you. But he led a terrible life afterwards. We must be careful lest we do these sins that Gideon had been committing. It is very important for us believers to live lives that are testimonies of the grace of God. Dapat pinakita ni Gideon ang biyaya ng Diyos sa kanya na siya ay isang farmer lang na duwag, na ilang beses pa kailangan i-encourage, pero binigyan siya ng tagumpay ng Panginoon. Pero eventually, nag-manifest yung kanyang ego. And pumunta sa kanyang utak na, ay, galing ko talaga, natalo ko yung mga Midianites. Our lives must continually be a testimony of His grace. Mga, mga kapatid, babalik at babalik tayo sa panahon na tayo ay sumampalataya sa Diyos. Na na-realize natin na hindi natin deserve itong Pagtitipo na to hindi natin deserve ang salvation na binigay ng Diyos. Hindi natin deserve mamuhay na masaya bilang mga Kristiyano. Pero dahil ang Diyos ay punong-puno ng habag at punong-puno ng biyaya, ay na-realize natin na tayo ay makasalanan through the gospel. And it is also through the gospel that we realize that there is hope for us. That there is one who saved us. There is one who died for our sins. At kaya naman sa ating pamumuhay bilang mga Kristiyano, mananatili pa rin, ipapakita natin na tayo ay mga niligtas ng dahil sa biyaya at hindi dahil sa ating sariling gawa. Our lives must then be dedicated to the Great Commission. Yung magbuting balita na nagligtas sa atin, nagturo sa atin kung ano ang katotohanan na sinasabi ng Biblia, itong mabuting balita ay ipapakita din natin sa mga ibang tao. We church members have to be dedicated through the Great Commission. Huwag tayo mag sa mga gawain. And even in our personal lives, kahit wala nagbabantay sa atin ng mga fellow church members, we must make it an attempt to follow this direct command from our Lord Jesus Christ to share the gospel to other people. One of the reasons why a lot of Christians find it hard to share the gospel is yung testimony nila, sirang-sira na sa mga kakilala nila. Sirang-sira sa mga kapitbahay nila, sirang-sira sa pamilya nila. You cannot preach the gospel, the grace of God, kung ikaw mismo hindi mo sinasabuhay yung grace of God. And that is why, magkasama yan. We rely on the power of the gospel to convert the person, but we who are believers must also understand that we have to live as the gospel has changed us. At dito natin may iwasan yung pagtaas sa mga tao at ang may aangat natin bilang mga church ay walang iba kundi ang Diyos. Kung lahat ay nagtutulungan, walang magbibida-bida. Walang may iwan sa gawain at eventually sila ay magiging bida. Kung lahat ay magtutulungan, walang magbibida-bida at walang ibang ibibida ang simbahan kundi ang ating Diyos. Let us all stand as we have our closing prayer. We will continue our lesson next Sunday. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another morning that you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, for the lessons that uh, you have imparted to us. We ask, Lord, that you give us wisdom and guidance as we apply these lessons in our lives and help us that these lessons also we would be able to understand better and teach to other people. As a church, Lord, we ask that you continually remind us that we have to live by grace. Lord, we are not perfect. 
we stumble at many times, Lord, but you are also a God of grace and you're a God of mercy. And thank you, Lord, that through your Son, Jesus Christ, we can always come to you and ask of you what we need, Lord, and we ask forgiveness for our sins. If there is anyone who is listening with us who have not yet professed their faith on Jesus Christ, we ask, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to convict their hearts and that they would be able to learn the truth from your word. All these things I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Maganda.